Cool. Welcome to my uh, safe arithmetic 80% speed run. So I submitted this as a talk, and now it's going to be a lightning talk. <laughs> um, the problem with C++ and our integral types is that they represent only a strict subset of all integers. So they're not real integers. Um, unsigned ints go from 0 to 2 to the, the, the width, and signed ints go from a different range, which is more strange. Now, our unsigned integer operations are not actually what we think they are. They're actually mod 2 to the width. And so they don't correspond to what we intend to use them for most of the time. The signed integer operations are even worse. I wasn't quite sure how to represent most of them. Um, division can actually overflow with a negative, and uh, modulo is actually not the correct mathematical modulo, which is really annoying to discover. So how can we make C++ integers behave like real integers? Well, what we need are preconditions. We can constrain operand values such that the result of an operation is representable. For example, as long as the result of your operation can be represented by your type, then it looks like a real regular integer, and you have real math. For signed integers, also, I don't know. This is why it's any percent. I'm already missing 9%. So this brings in the safe arithmetic library. This is something that we're working on. There's a lot of other libraries that do um, intervals. There's um, one by Robert Ramey, um, David Stone. There's a few others. They're, they're excellent. Um, and uh, we just have some different thoughts here. So one, we want to store integral values in types describing constraints. Two, we want to provide safe mechanisms for creating these values. And we want to strongly discourage or disallow unsafe operations. So one way is we can have an interval. And if you know safe numerics, you can do something exactly like this. You can detect at compile time and, and constrain at compile time the value to this interval from 0 to 100. Um, safe arithmetic introduces arbitrary sets. So you can have arbitrary collections of numbers that you want to be able to constrain at compile time with some runtime checking. Or for bit operations, it ends up being really complicated to try and keep track of that with intervals or with individual values. So we have this uh, mask primitive type that lets you basically fix certain bits and let other bits be variable. And that defines what your set is. But we can do more. We can create unions, and we can create intersections. So we have this integer constraint DSL to create these arbitrary constraints for um, single values. But on top of that, when we perform an operation, we can calculate what is the new set of possible values that we can be. And we can do this very efficiently. It's not like formal proofs. It's, it's a lot faster. Um, and we have a few other operations that are very useful. So what we do at compile time, we make sure only safe assignments are allowed. You can't take a raw int and assign it to a safe value. Even if you have a safe value, you have to make sure that it's a subset of what you're assigning it to. Um, values that can't be 0 must be initialized. So we're doing that with this uh, UDL. Division and module operators must be proven. Um, the, the denominator must be proven to be non-zero at compile time, or it fails compilation. So how do we create safe values? Well. The simplest way is just to use one of the predefined types that use the whole range of whatever type. And in that case, you actually can assign it a, a raw integral. Or you can assign a safe type using the provided UDL, which provides something like an integral constant. We can assign a safe value from another compatible safe value. And all of this so far is happening at compile time. You can't do these specific operations at runtime. However, we do need to get data into our system, and we want to validate that data and make sure that it fits our constraints. And so we have this match function, which is kind of like pattern matching, not quite, but kind of, where it will evaluate a set of um, potential functions with uh, safe arguments, and the first one that is satisfied will be executed. And if none of them are satisfied, it executes the default. Sometimes we know better. And we need to make this very, very clear for review. So sometimes we have to bypass these automated checks. And so we have this unsafe cast. There are certain algorithms, certain things that we know are going to be more tightly bound than what we can automatically calculate. And so we can use unsafe cast. And at least when we get to the code review, we can grep for it and know this is a big red flag. And we have to be very careful. So how do we get the values out? 
There's only one method. It doesn't automatically let you just cast to an int. You have to use safe cast. So we can be very, very clear on when we're entering and exiting the safe context. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>